Hope Dahl's rule doesn't have to restrict to x going to a particular finite value a. Uh, you could change the hypotheses like this. Assume f and g are still differentiable. But don't require them to be differentiable around a finite point. Say, for x large enough, say anything bigger than b, it's differentiable. And that, say, uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x uh, equals the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x, both equal 0. Uh, by the way, this, this also works uh, if that limit is uh, infinity, but we'll talk about that perhaps at a different time. Uh, finally, we can't have the derivative of the bottom be equal to 0 for all large values, right? That's just like regular Hopital's. Then this limit is actually equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of f prime of x over g prime of x. So the punchline is exactly the same as Hopital's rule if the limit on the right exists, and that also works if you want to put in negative infinities there and an interval that goes off to negative infinity. So let's just have a look at two problems that look like that, okay? What about this? Well, you might say, hmm, this is, a, uh, this is an infinity times zero indeterminate form. Well, if we just work up a little magic here, um, we can write this as sine of 1 over x over 1 over x. Now there's a nice fraction. This is going to zero. That's going to zero. So we can apply Hopital's rule. Only difference there is we're worried about uh, x going to infinity, so we take the derivative as usual. Uh, the derivative sine of something on the inside is cosine of the same thing, but using the chain rule, then times. What's the derivative of 1 over x? That's negative 1 over x to the second, right? And then what's the derivative of 1 over x? Negative 1 over x squared. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> it's not a shock that those cancel. So then the real question is, what happens as x goes to infinity of cosine of 1 over x? And the answer, of course, is this internal part is getting closer and closer to 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. How about this over here? Uh, again, you can sort of see, hmm, x to the negative infinity. x to the negative infinity is getting close to 0. This is getting close to infinity. Hmm, let's see what happens there. Uh, I'd really like that to be a fraction. Perhaps it's easiest to move the e to the x to the denominator, e to the negative x. So now I'm going to apply Hopital's rule, by the way. That's now infinity over infinity. So. The limit as x goes to negative infinity. The derivative of the numerator is 2x. The derivative of the denominator is negative e to the negative x, right? Now, this happens on occasion. This is still going to infinity. That's still going to, uh, sorry, this is going to negative infinity. Now, this is going to negative infinity. So we got to use Hopital's again. Again, this little notation lets me know when I look back that I've used it twice. Uh, and by the way, since e to the x grows so much faster, when you've got a polynomial, you know it's going to win out in the end. Now we've got positive e to the negative x. Now we can just look and see what happens. Okay, that stays put at 2. This term, uh, the negatives cancel, so you're looking at e to something approaching infinity. The numerator stays put, the denominator approaches infinity, so the whole thing approaches zero.